Greetings, Earth. Oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. I have this gnarly incision where one of my kidneys used to be, and it's just not healing properly. But, but I'll try to make it through this review. Today, I'm reviewing one of the most infamous studio microphones of all time. That microphone is the Neumann U87AI. If you are interested in just the microphone, it will cost you $3,200. But if you want the studio set, it will cost you $3,600. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. Please use them so I can recuperate the cost from this and fix my missing kidney. Also, for the majority of this review, I will have the microphone connected to the Universal Audio X8. But for this introduction, I have been connected directly to the 18i20 what I call the Jacksepticeye special because he connects his U87 AI to a focus right. So I wanted to demonstrate that so you could get a feel for it. But now I am going to switch over to the Universal Audio X8. My gain will be set at 30 decibels. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post. So check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. First off, if you go for the $3,200 SKU of this microphone, you will get this nice wooden presentation and storage box, and you'll get the microphone. But if you buy the $3,600 SKU, you will get that same wooden storage box, you'll get the same microphone, but you will get a shock mount which goes for about $400 on its own, and you'll get a windscreen. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels absolutely outstanding as well as it should given the price tag on this thing. It does have an all metal body as well as a somewhat flimsy metal mesh grill so I am not gonna press it too hard. It weighs in at 500 grams. On the front of the microphone, you have a three-way polar pattern selection switch. And on the back, you have two switches, one being a high pass filter, as well as a negative 10 decibel pad. And lastly, on the bottom of the microphone, you will find the standard XLR port. Then as far as the specs of this microphone, it has a cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has a sensitivity of around negative 31 dB on cardioid, negative 34 dB on omnidirectional, and negative 33 dB for figure eight. It has an impedance of 150 ohms. It has a self noise of approximately 12 dBA on cardioid, 15 dBA on omnidirectional, and 14 dBA on figure eight. It has a max SPL of 117 dB or 127 dB with the pad engaged, and it has a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Alrighty, so first up, I am on the cardioid polar pattern, and I will rotate around to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We will continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's how it sounds from the rear. Continue around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle. And lastly, we will rotate and end at the front of the mic. Next, we are on the omnidirectional polar pattern, and I will rotate all the way around the microphone. As I am rotating, you should hear no real huge change in the tone, and we will end at the front of the microphone. And lastly, we are on the figure eight pattern. We will move around to 90 degrees, the first dead area. We will continue around to 180 degrees so you can hear what the second area of sensitivity sounds like. We will continue around the microphone to the second null or dead area and we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone on the figure eight polar pattern. Next, I absolutely hate myself for doing this, but let's test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing, and here is how it sounds. About three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it sounds about one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you Leet Jacksepticeye level gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here's how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. 
Now to demonstrate how the firm microphone mount performs, I will go ahead and bump the desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will go ahead and bump the boom arm to see how much of that noise it rejects. Now I have the microphone in its extremely expensive shock mount. I will bump the desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. And I will bump the boom arm to see how much of that noise it can reject. Next, I'll go ahead and tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I am right on top of the microphone to really accentuate the proximity effect. I do not have the high pass filter engaged and here is how the audio sounds. And now I have engaged the high pass filter on the microphone. I am at the exact same distance with the exact same gain setting. And here is how the audio compares with the switch engaged. Now let's go ahead and see how the official Neumann windscreen affects the tone of the microphone. So right now I am on the cardioid polar pattern about three inches off of the mic and here is how the audio sounds without the foam windscreen installed. And now I have installed the provided foam windscreen. I am at the exact same distance. All of the settings are the exact same and here is how the audio compares with the foam windscreen installed. Next, I want to do a very quick comparison between the U87AI and a bunch of other microphones on the market so we can see how the U87 stacks up against its competition. So first up, I am on the U87AI about six inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth. My gain on the Universal Audio X8 is at 26 decibels and here is how the microphone sounds. The first microphone we're comparing it against is the Niewer NW700, which is about a $20 microphone. I am at the exact same distance with the exact same gain setting. And here is how the audio compares to a $32 or $3600 microphone. Back on the U87AI, here is how it sounds. Let's jump to another microphone. Next, we have the Audio-Technica AT2020, and I am at around 6 inches, gain still at 26 dB. Make sure to check the lower third because I will have to boost each of these microphones quite differently in post to level match them, but here is what a $100 microphone sounds like compared to the U87 AI. Day 2 of recording, I am back on the U87 AI, 6 inches off of the microphone, gain at 26 dB. Let's jump to another mic and compare it to that. Now I am on the Neat King B. I am 6 inches away, gain at 26 dB. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it, but here is how a $130 condenser mic compares to a $3600 condenser mic. Just to act as a palate cleanser, we are back on the U87 AI, so you can hear the tone of this microphone on the cardioid mode before we jump to another mic. Next, we are on the SE Electronics SEX1. That's right, the SEX1. I am six inches off of this microphone. Gain set at 26 dB. And here is how the audio sounds. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. Let's go back to the other mic, the U87. Hey, hey. Ho ho, we're back on the U87 and it's never going to go. Here is how it sounds, six inches off. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these microphones in post because I may boost them slightly differently to level match them. But here's the U87, let's jump to another mic. Next, we are on the Rode NT1, which is one of my all time favorite microphones. I am about six inches off of the mic, gain set at 26 dB. And here is how a $260 mic sounds compared to the U87. Back on the U87 AI, listen to it, understand it, feel it, listen to what it says, and let's jump to another microphone. Next, just because we can, I have the SM7B. For this, I did increase my gain to 55 decibels, six inches off of the mic, and here is how it sounds in neutral mode compared to the Neumann U87. Hey again, Phoebe Bridgers, nice to have you back. We are back on, <laughs> we're back on the U87 AI. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump to another microphone. And just to be as thorough as possible, now I have included the Electro Voice RE20, six inches away from my mouth with my gain at 55 dB. Check the lower third to see what I did in post. And here is how it compares to the Neumann U87 AI. 
Because I know you watch also, hey Haley Williams, just wanted to say hi, like your music, great voice. Back on the U87 AI, let's jump to another microphone and compare it to that. Next, I have the CAD Equitech E100S, no filter, no pad engaged, six inches off of the microphone with my gain set at 26 dB, and here is how the audio compares to the U87. That's right, we are back on the U87. Here is how this microphone sounds. Let's jump to another one so you can hear how it compares. Now I am on the Shure KSM32, which is one of the smoother microphones that I have tested. I am six inches off of this thing, 26 dB of gain. Check the lower third because I will have to boost this quite a bit in post, but here is how it compares to the U87. If you will allow me to tell you a story, we are back on the Neumann U87. Here is how the microphone sounds, 6 inches off, gain at 26 dB. Let's jump to another microphone and compare it to that. Next we have the Neumann TLM102, 6 inches away, gain at 26 decibels, and here is how this microphone sounds, compared to the U87 AI. What a shocker, back on the U87 AI. 26 dB of gain, 6 inches off of the microphone, check the lower third. Let's jump to another mic and compare it to that. Now I am on a microphone that, if I am not mistaken, was designed by David Royer. This is the Mojave MA201 FET. 6 inches off of this thing, gain at 26 dB, check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. And here is how it compares to the Neumann U87 AI. You would think that I get sick of saying the exact same thing over and over again, and I absolutely do. Here's the U87, here's how it sounds, let's jump to another microphone. Next, I am on the Austrian Audio OC818, I am on the cardioid polar pattern, no high pass filter engaged and no pad engaged, gain at 26 dB, 6 inches away from the microphone, and here is how it sounds compared to the Neumann. If I say this one more time, I might jump out the window, but I am back on the U87 AI, and I just want to compare it to as many microphones as possible so you understand the context that this microphone exists within. So here is the U87. Let's jump to another one. Now I am on the Shure KSM44A. I am six inches off of this thing. I have the cardioid polar pattern, no high pass filter engaged, and no pad engaged. And here is how this microphone compares to the $3,600 Neumann U87 AI. Alrighty, we are back on the U87 AI, and I simply don't understand how a microphone mount can cost $100. But here is how the microphone sounds. Let's jump to another mic and compare it to that. And now we have the AKG C414 XL2. I am six inches off of this microphone on the cardioid polar pattern. No high pass filter, no pad engaged. Gain at 26 dB and here is how it sounds compared to the U87. Please, dear Lord, let this be the last microphone we're comparing it to. We are back on the U87 AI, so you can hear how this microphone sounds before we jump to the last one, I hope. Guess what? Now we are on the Neumann TLM103. I am six inches away from the microphone with my gain set at 26 decibels. And here is how the audio from this microphone compares to the Neumann U87 AI. Forgot what microphone we were reviewing. <laughs> Whoops. And the last thing that I want to do is run this microphone through a few different higher end preamps so you can hear what kind of tones you're able to get when you run it through different signal paths. And first up, here is a baseline. This is the U87 AI running directly into the universal audio. Gain set at 30 dB. Here's how the microphone sounds. Let's jump to something to compare it to. First up, I have the U87 running through the warm audio. WA73EQ, which is a 1073 clone. I have my gain set to 35 dB on the preamp. I am bypassing the EQ, and here is how the audio sounds compared to running direct into the X8. Now I am back on the Neumann running directly into the UAX8 interface. Here is how it sounds, so you can hear this before we jump to another preamp and see how it changes the tone of the mic. And now the U87 is running through the Neve Portico 5017. I do not have a high pass filter, a compressor, or the silk circuit engaged. My gain is set at 36 dB, and that is running line level into the X8. Here is how the microphone sounds compared to running direct into the Universal Audio X8 preamp. 
And one more time, we are back on the U87 running through the Universal Audio X8. Here is how the microphone sounds in this signal path. Let's jump to one more preamp so you can hear the difference in sound. And lastly, we have the U87 AI running through the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II. The preamp is set to plus 5 dB and the level is set to 4. I am completely bypassing the compressor and limiter. And here is how the microphone sounds compared to direct into the Universal Audio X8. <laughs> I felt my wallet break in half Because expensive mics They're all I need How I want someone who will help me Won't you please save me my money Please send help <laughs> It's out of control. I cannot stop. It's only going to get worse. Honestly. How do I put this? I absolutely love and adore this microphone, but at the same time, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> and first up in terms of pros, one of the main issues that you run into with multi-pattern microphones is that the non-cardioid polar patterns sound terrible. That is not the case with this microphone. All three polar patterns sound incredible. Also, the build quality of this microphone is absolutely impeccable, and it is still hand-built in Germany, which is just incredible to see, especially nowadays. And lastly, but most importantly, the sound. It sounds like a U87 AI. People look for that character, and there are no substitutes for it. If you want the sound of a U87 AI, you have to get the U87 AI, and it does not disappoint in that department. And then in terms of cons, this is less of a con and more of a disclaimer. This microphone does not do well at rejecting ambient noise and background noise. So if you're in an untreated room or you plan on recording with a bunch of background noise going on, this microphone is not going to do you any favors. But when we look for actual cons, there is so little that I actually dislike about this microphone. I'm trying to get away from saying, oh, the price tag is the con, because if they're charging that and people are willing to pay for it, it's not really a con. The one thing that I will fault this microphone ecosystem for is the price of the accessories. $100 for a firm microphone mount, $400 for a shock mount. That's extortionate. That is criminal. But people are willing to pay for it like me because I'm an idiot. So I get why they do it, but still I would like to see more affordable options in terms of the accessories, or at least ensure that you include all of the accessories when you're buying it. So what are my overall thoughts and my opinions on this microphone? On the electric guitar, the low end was tight and controlled. The top end was smooth and very pleasing even when I got to the upper register of the guitar, but the midsection was just way too forward for my personal tastes. When I was recording some music, I had to cut quite a bit of the mid frequencies out for the electric guitar. So for that rock distorted sound, I really wasn't too keen on it. Then for the acoustic guitar, I absolutely loved it on this instrument. It was just punchy and detailed. The low end was not overpowering, but it was still full. The mids weren't too forward, but they were articulate and detailed. And the top end was very, very articulate and crisp, but it wasn't harsh or fatiguing. To my ears, it is just excellently balanced for the acoustic guitar. 
Next up for singing, again, I absolutely loved it for that application because it has this nice airy top end, but it doesn't get brittle. It also is very detailed, but it doesn't get sibilant or fatiguing or sharp or shrill. The mids on this microphone do come across quite a bit more forward than a lot of modern microphones, but it's not overly nasally. But if you're looking for a more modern V-shaped sound and you don't want that forward midsection for your singing, this isn't going to be it. Then the low end was just controlled, full, warm, everything that you want out of the low end on a singing microphone. And lastly for spoken word, this is probably one of the most ubiquitous or widely used voiceover microphones in the world. The low end is nice and controlled. The top end is smooth. It is not the smoothest sounding mic that I have come across, but it is still relatively smooth and it adds a little bit of detail. And on that note, it is very detailed and I would say almost to a fault, especially if you have a less appealing voice like mine. It captures all the faults of my voice. That's not a fault of the microphone, but if you have an unpleasing voice, it's going to capture that unpleasing voice. It is not going to do you any favors. But in general, it is an incredible voiceover microphone, especially if you are looking for that U87 sound. What better mic to get than the U87? So would I recommend the U87 AI? Of course I would, but I need to include a disclaimer. You do not need this microphone to make good sounding recordings, whether it be music or voiceover. There are plenty of other microphones that are significantly more affordable that will provide you an amazing sound. But if you have the budget and you are looking for that U87 sound, yes, I recommend it. But with that being said, before you jump in and buy this microphone, if you have the opportunity to use it, please do, especially because it is such a large investment. Do not just see, oh, everybody uses it, so I'm going to go buy it. That is silly. You need to understand the microphone before you go in and invest 32 or 3600 bucks into it. It may not be the right microphone for the sound that you're trying to get. So just go ahead, listen to as many samples as you can find from as many different people as you can find and see if it fits the use case that you're looking for. I was going to sign off here, but one really cool fact, if you've seen the How It's Made episode where they build a microphone, that's the Neumann U87 AI. I'll go ahead and link that video in the description because it is just so much fun to see them build this microphone from scratch with their hands. So cool. And that is going to wrap up the most expensive video that I have ever made in my entire life. Let me know in the comments down below which of the microphones in that comparison shootout thing did you like the best. Do you think the U87 AI is worth $3,600? Or do you think you should just go with the KSM44 or the Mojave MA201 or the Neat King B? Which one did you like the best? If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, go ahead and subscribe. Logo down beneath me, and don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you want to hang out in the Discord server and talk about audio gear, podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos and hopefully buy back my missing kidney. Who knows? I may never get it back. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.